What's going on? And welcome back to another episode of the Account for Your Life podcast. This is Jay Moore, the healthy accountant, helping you to account for your life. Today, you know, I was sleeping and it must have been it must have been in a two or three, three o'clock hour. And, and I was kind of tossing and turning and and I just had, I had I guess I had a recurring idea that's been coming up. And last night, you know, I was watching something that probably triggered this thought. And it, it just boiled it down to this. If you knew it was possible, if you knew it was possible, what would you do? Like, if you really knew it, would you go for it? So today we're going to look at certainty, but we're going to look at uncertainty. Uncertainty, you know, and how that's created, how that affects us, how that keeps us from the things that we say that we actually desire, and 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 then how we can actually get out of that. So that, stick with me to the end. Um, you know, you definitely don't want to miss how you can break through with whatever it is you're dealing with. So let's look at this. If you knew it was possible, or if you really had a good unction, unction, unction. I think I think that was the word that we used to use years ago. If you really had this unction that something was possible, what would you like? What would you focus on? And I was watching a video um, by, you know, a guy named Alex Homozi. If you know who he is, he's a pretty um, yeah, successful entrepreneur. And he was talking to a group of gym owners. And he was talking to a group of gym owners about how to get rich. Because <laughs> he knows how to get rich. Like, like he's, you know, he's made a lot of money. You know, he sold his last company for over $40 million. And so he's, you know, he's pretty much an authority on this. And, and he's definitely an authority in the gym space because he owned gyms. He owned gyms, and then he basically helped thousands of gym owners turn around their gyms. So he was talking to them about, you know, hey, if you're not rich, this is probably why you're not rich. And and, and so like like if you're a business owner like me, it didn't matter if he was just talking to business of uh, gym owners. I clicked on it. I said I want to know what it is. And this is what he said. He said it boils down to just one thing. He says, you just don't want to advertise. He says, you just don't advertise enough. And I said to myself, he said, it doesn't really matter what type of service, what product. At the end of the day, you because you're going to need data and you have to advertise in order to get data. You have to get more customers in order to actually mess up. So, so you may not have the best product or service, but it doesn't matter. You still have to advertise. He says, if you're not rich, this is why. He said, I can stop right here. <laughs> I was listening. I was just like, dang, he's right. Advertising. But, oh, I don't want to waste any money. He says, but that's the problem. A lot of times the uncertainty shows up. See, when we think of what's possible, the first thing that comes is doubt. Come on now. Seriously. Now, you know, when you think of what's possible, the first thing you think of is doubt. Like, is, come on, is that is that real? Like, like if someone comes to you and they and they say, hey, man, I got this. I got this scheme for us to get rich. You ever had one of one of those types of people come to you and say, man, I got to wait for us to get rich and we can do it fast. And usually most people are like, ah, oh, that's that's probably a pyramid scheme. That's the first thing they'd say when one of my other mentors would say, man, look, here's the problem with that statement is that, look, most people are warned about the get rich quick scheme but they're not warned about the stay broke for the rest of your life scheme. That was from Myron Golden. And I was like, yeah, when I first heard that, I says, he says, you default into the one you wasn't warned about. Wow, that's interesting. We pay attention to things that won't necessarily get us to where we want to go, which is they say, don't get involved in a get rich quick scheme. So they warned us, but then we opt in by default to the stay. You heard it, bro, for the rest of your life scheme. And so what happens when these things come about, we start immediately doubting the possibility of whether or not it's true or can happen for us. See, we all have an, an expectation. You know, if you believe in God, like most, most of us do believe in God, the, the creator of the universe, and the creator of the universe powered us with something amazing. He powered us with expectation. 
That's what he powered us with. He powered us the, the ability to see things that don't exist or that, that, that aren't physically in our reality. He's powered us the ability to make things happen even though our, the situation around us may not necessarily say that it should happen. He's given us this, this, this keen sense of awareness that when we see that something could happen, we could make it happen because we have an expectation. So if you know that getting rich is possible, then you go for it. Like, <laughs> I just went, I went to ChatGPT and I says, hey, ChatGPT, can you give me, I says, first I was going to ask it, hey, can you give me as many verses as possible that talks about, that talks about riches and prosperity? Because in, in one of my new book ideas, it's it's on it's on getting rich, <laughs> right? Like crazy, right? No, but that's in me. I have to do it. So I said, give me first. I was going to say, I said, well, give me twenty five. So he gives me twenty five. So I'm looking. I, I wanted to see, you know, one specific one come up. Which I'm like, give me twenty five. Okay, he didn't give it there. Hey, give me another twenty five. Didn't give it there. Hey, give me another twenty five. Then give me another ten. Give me another ten. And finally, in that last, in that so twenty five, twenty five. No, I think I got to seventy. In the in the in the sixty something, then he finally gave me the one that I was looking for. Just I, I wanted to see. It's not a popular verse. I could ask for more because the Bible is full of riches and prosperity, full of it, full of it. But yet, the part that the parts that we have been paying attention to don't lead us to riches and prosperity. Why? Now, of course, there's some things that says that you shouldn't be hastily. I think there's a proverb that talks about you shouldn't be hastily to get rich, but it didn't say you shouldn't do it. Think about that. It says you shouldn't do it hastily, meaning you shouldn't you shouldn't focus on it so much that 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 you forget to do things that you should be doing. So, but it didn't say don't get rich. Oh, no, it's because we've taken verses out of context. Oh, it says, you know, Jesus said that, you know, he, he's talking to the rich young ruler and, and rich young ruler was like, hey, 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 I'm rich, this, this, that, and the third. And what must I do to, you know, you know, to get into the kingdom? And, and so so when he said he had to give all the stuff away and then all of a sudden it was just like, hey, well, even the rich can't go, even the rich, even people that are rich can't make it into the kingdom. And then we've taken that out of context. So think about all the warnings that you've gotten. That's creed, that's caused what we want to come back to is uncertainty. So we've been talking about being certain, you know, up until like, you know, since Saturday. However, today we're talking about being uncertain. Where, where does uncertainty come from? Does anybody know where uncertainty comes from? I don't know, to be honest. I don't really know where it comes from. It just comes. However, I do have a, I do have a, a reference as to how it comes. You want to know how it comes? You see these two things we have here? They're called eyes. Now, here's what, here's what the thing is. Your eyes can tell you lies. You should write that down. My eyes can tell me lies. Your eyes can tell you lies because say you wanted to lose weight and you looked at your body. What would you see? You would see a person that's fat or you would see a person that has more weight than what they want. So if you believe that you are that, then it's potentially going to be harder for your expectation to kick in. So we have to then say, well, I may be carrying some extra weight, but you know what? This is what I see. I see a person that is like this. And then what happens is that comes through a different awareness. It doesn't come through your eyes. Your eyes cannot lead you to loss of weight. No, your eyes can reap the benefit to see that it actually happened, but your eyes can't lead you there. There's a, there's a verse in Romans. 10 and 17. What does it say? It says, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. So part of part of the book that I want to write on riches, it's about the word of God. Like it's about like, like what we hear. It's about what we say. It's about what we think. It's about what we speak. It's about what we do. And you become certain because your ears can hear. Think about that. We can remove all uncertainty by closing our eyes 
and listen. Has anybody ever listened or gone outside? You should try this. You should go outside, close your eyes, and all you do is listen around. Just listen. You would just hear, you would hear everything. You, like literally the birds are chirping all day long. But we don't know, a lot of times we're not noticing because we're just looking. We can see the birds, but we're not hearing the birds. The birds are chirping. And I'm going to tell you, when they chirp the most in the morning, birds are chirping all morning. Like, wah, 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 wah. they just chirping and chirping and chirping and chirping. And here's the thing. Birds chirp so much that, like, I, I, I paid, I've been paying attention to birds lately. I'm like, wow. I wonder what they're saying. Don't, don't we? Think about this. Birds make noises. To us, they're noises. They're speaking on a frequency. They have a communication tool that they use and theirs is pitch. Now this is me giving an esoteric um, explanation of something that I have not studied. <laughs> I have not gone deep into birds. I'm just gonna give you an understanding that I have of birds. So when you think about, think about how we speak, right? We actually are creating words. Does it, do we hear words? When we hear birds, we don't hear words. What we hear is a, a tone. We hear tone. Now, I did hear something about birds recently where the person was talking about birds and how their tone, their frequency, the sound that they are pitching on, it does something in the environment. It helps the environment. It helps the grass. It helps the trees. It's helping the environment in some way. So that's just something that I heard. Um, but let's think about the birds. Do you know why the birds were created? Why were birds created? They were created to be birds. What do birds do? They were created to fly. Just fly all over the place. Just fly, go in the air and just fly. Birds were created to fly. Why were fish created? Fish were created to fish to be fish, to swim in the water, just swim all day, every day, all day, just swimming. That's all they do is swim. That's it. They can't do anything else except swim. So, so let's, let's consider. Birds fly. That's all they do every day, all day, every day, flying. Fish, fish, meaning all they do is swim, they swim, they swim, all day swimming, swimming. But what do we do? Ooh. What do we do? What do you do? What were we created to do? We were created to create from the things that the creator made. See, because we don't have the ability to create from nothing. Now, we have the ability to think from nothing. Meaning we can think of anything, but we don't have the ability to create from nothing. So we can create through a manner which the creator has already created. So the creator already created trees. So then we can use trees in order to create furniture and all sorts of things. The creator had already created dirt. So we can use dirt to build things. The creator had already created, you know, all of the stuff around us, all the matter and the, you know, the atoms. And then we can take the atoms and take the, take all the matter and put it together together and make something new out of something that was already created. Just like, you know, we can, we can take our words and we can, we can put together a string of words that creates an idea. We can put together a string of words that creates a podcast. We can put together a string of words that creates a book. We can put together a string of words that creates ideas and stuff and things in places that wasn't there before. But this thing called uncertainty, it kills everything 
in his path. Uncertainty does. See, because what uncertainty is at the root is doubt. Doubt. It's just doubt. Hey, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Then there's doubt when I go to move forward. God can give me immeasurably far more than I can ask or think through the power which worketh in me. Then there's doubt because then I'm looking at that like, is that true? Can I really do all things through Christ who gives me strength? Like, is that even possible? Do you know, you know, and then Jeremiah says it like this. He says, For I know the plans that I have for you to prosper you, you know, give you a future, you know, give you a future. And, and you're sitting like, well, is that really true? It's God that really prosper me. You know, you know, you know, in Deuteronomy 818, it says, you know, for for God gives us the power to get wealth. <laughs> he says he gives the power to get wealth. Like, can God really give me power to get, is that really true that, that I can actually have power to get wealth? Is that actually possible to have wealth? Well, that's why we got to strip everything away. Let's strip it all away. If you know it's possible, then the first thing we got to do is believe it. We got to believe it. Like, like you got to take it as true. Now, here's the thing. Does that mean it's going to be a straight line all the way to the success? Heck no. I'm sitting here. As I, like, like I said, I woke up and... Well, I was thinking about the one of the last things that I saw last night, which was advertise. I said to myself, if I would just advertise, I could get rich. Doesn't mean this is a straight line. It doesn't mean that you know what happens in a week. It doesn't mean that it happens really fast. But here's the thing: I wanted to. Because I'd love to have a plan that gets me rich quick. Who? Who would, man, maybe I should do a series on getting rich quick, the get rich quick scheme. <laughs> um, who doesn't want to plan to get rich? I was talking to, I'm about to close here. I was talking to Jared, my oldest son, and his girlfriend, Sarai, a few months ago. And we were talking about a bunch of things and school and, you know, next steps. And I just told him, I told him something that I'm, I'm really coming into agreement. I've come into agreement with this. Be honest about how much money you like to have and how much money you like to make. Be honest about this. You have to be very honest here. Just be really honest. When I say be really honest, be so honest about it that you say, man, I do. is it possible to make a million dollars every year? Think about this. If it's possible then what direction do I need to go in? So I was just saying, look, look, you're in school. They're not preparing you for this. You know, hey, you you may be learning something. You may, you, you're may you probably learning more about how to kind of like follow directions than anything. You're not necessarily learning how to get money or anything like that. You're not actually learning the, the thing that you're probably going to school for. You know, unless you're my son, Jacob, which he's in culinary school and all they do is cook. So I'm, they have some classes, but they spend... I would say they spend 50% of the time in, 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 in the actual thing that they're doing than anything, than, than, than anything else. 50%. So they're 50% cooking and then 50% in the classroom. That means that it, when he came home after spending, you know, what's that? August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, nine months. He spent nine months away, comes home, he cooks almost every day. Because that's the habit that they formed. They were almost cook, they were cooking almost every. Well, they went to school four days a week. They cooked two days a week all day. So he's in a he's in a regimen. He created a habit of cooking, and I don't have to ask him to do it. All he does, he says, Dad, I need the car to go to the store. Oh, okay. You know, I, I'm gonna go buy this, 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 and this. I'm planning out the meals for the week, and it's crazy how we did it yesterday. Um, he, you know, because they were trying to get him to cook last week, and I was, I, I was blowing his off like I wasn't going to cook. And so he was like, "Hey, Dad, I bought you some jerk season for that chicken in there," not knowing that he's trying to get me to cook. And he said it a couple of times, and I was like, "Yeah, okay, that's cool." And so Jenny was like, "Well, you, you're not in the kitchen cooking." It's like six thirty. I'm like, "Cooking me? 
I'm trying not to cook. And so he's just like, yeah, he said, she says, well, Jacob was really trying to get you to cook today. He says, because, you know, left those chicken, chicken things in there and you got to make the chicken, you got to make chicken. But he's now in a position that he can tell me when to cook. He said, hey, I want you to make it like this. We're in nine months ago. He didn't do that. Nine months ago, the thing that he probably made the most was he made sweets all the time. Not even all, but he made them. But he wasn't really doing as much cooking. So what it took was, all right, this is where we finally get to. What does it take to become more certain? What does it take to remove doubt? Are you ready? I took 20, almost 21 minutes to get here. This is wild. It takes creating a habit. Just one. Create one habit that that supports the idea, the, the idea that you would like to create and do that habit. How do, how, how do I know that it works? Jacob wanted to go to school, to be in culinary. He said he wanted to learn how he wanted to be a, he wanted to be a chef, he wanted to cook. He created a habit over a nine-month period. And now what he does is he implemented the habit without anybody telling him to do it. So I'm just learning this from my son. 18 years old, turned 18 in April. I'm 52. I just learned that if you create a habit around what's possible, then all things are possible to them that believe. That's how you move out. That's how you become certain. And that's how you remove all the uncertainty from your life, from your business, from whatever it is you, whatever it is you like to do. So that's it for today, guys. Man, I'm super excited and I'm looking forward to the rest of this month, this journey. Listen, don't don't forget, make this podcast, you know, something that you want to listen to. If it's not, you know, live, um, definitely, definitely make sure you catch this podcast at some point during your day. There's going to be breakthrough that happens this month of June 2024. And I want you to be a part of that breakthrough. So that's it, guys. I appreciate you for joining me for this episode of the Account for Life podcast. Be sure to like, subscribe to the channel on YouTube or wherever you are watching this podcast. God bless you. And I will see you on the next one. Peace. This has been the Account for Your Life podcast with your host, the healthy accountant himself, Jay Moore. Until next time, make it a great day.